we're familiar with the traditional class method syntax. A scope simply defines the class method for us dynamically. The first parameter is the name of the method, also the name of the scope, in the form of a symbol. The second parameter is the custom query code that was in the body of the method. You can think of a scope as a way to simply name a custom query. But this syntax as is won't work. The query code needs to be reevaluated every time we call the scope. The list of events that are considered as past events today will be different from the list of events that are considered past as of tomorrow. To reevaluate the query when the scope is called, the second parameter needs to be a callable object. To do that, we'll use a lambda and put the query inside curly braces. Lambda converts a block, the query between the curly braces, to a callable object, also called a proc object. As a shortcut, instead of spelling out lambda, we can use an arrow. This is the first time we've seen a lambda, which is a Ruby thing, not a Rails thing. So before we return to our scope, let's take a quick detour to see how the lambda works. So as Nicole said, lambda is a Ruby thing, and just to demonstrate that, instead of showing it in the Rails console, I'm actually going to show it inside of an IRB session, just the Ruby interactive shell. Let's say we have a variable called greeting, and it just has a string, hello, the time is, and then we'll interpolate a string value here by calling time.now. All right, now we have our variable. If we just print out the variable in IRB here, we see that it's currently 935.50. And if we evaluate the variable again, well, it's still 935.50. That variable, greeting, holds onto a string that has a fixed time. The first time this string was evaluated, time.now returned the current time, and then it stored it in the greeting. But let's say we want to save this bit of code right here and call it later. Well, one way to do that would be to write a method called greeting, and then we could just call the method. But Ruby offers another way in the form of a callable object. And the way we do that is we come back to here where we're assigning this greeting. Instead of just assigning it directly like that, we can use lambda. That's a keyword in Ruby. And lambda takes a block, so we put that bit of code inside of a Ruby block. When we evaluate that in IRB, notice that greeting is now a proc object. If I look at its class, it's a Ruby proc object, which is a callable object. Now notice when we did that assignment, it didn't actually evaluate the string at all. We didn't see hello some current time. Instead, we just got the proc object. So it's a callable object. Let's go ahead and call it. How do we call that? Well, we take greeting and we just call the method call. Now it evaluates the string and we see that the time is 9.37.36. We can turn around and call it again. Notice this time, the time has changed, 9.37.44. Every time we call the call method, the string gets reevaluated. So up here, we use the lambda method to create this callable object, but there's a shortcut in Ruby as well. I'll just go back up to there. Instead of using lambda, we can use the arrow, as Nicole talked about, just like this. It does exactly the same thing. It gives us back a proc object, and we can call call, and every time we call that, the string is reevaluated. It's like we have this name chunk of code, and we can run it anytime by calling the call method on that object.